Hey again, everybody. Uh, as promised, I said I would do the last example there on the AP multiple choice style. Uh, probably be a good idea, uh, if you haven't tried it yet, to actually just try it on your own. If you watch the other video with number two, then you should actually be able to do this one. It, they're very similar. So uh, maybe give it a shot first if you, if you haven't had a chance and then uh, see if you can get it. If you get it, obviously, then you're good to go. If not, maybe watch uh, the rest of the video and see where you might have messed up. Okay, so again, I have uh, an integral here. There's no way I can do any kind of substitution, uh, integrate by parts. I, there's no trick to this. I can't just split them up as is. So I do need to find a way to split them up properly. So I want my 7x over my 2x minus 3. And it's always nice when they factor it for us, but you could have factored it like in the first one. Uh, and that's got to equal a over 2x minus 3 plus b over x plus 2. Put the pieces back together. 2x minus 3, x plus 2. So my a is going to need the x plus 2 term, and my b is going to need the 2x minus 3 term. And everything should match up nicely. Well, certainly the denominator does. That's kind of the whole point. So the denominators match up perfectly. I just got to force the numerators to match up. So in order to do that, my 7x must equal ax plus 2a plus 2bx minus 3b. Again, apples with apples, oranges with oranges. So here's some apples. There's some apples. So 7x equals x a plus 2b. That's a 2. Hang on. Let me just fix that real quick. OK, a plus 2b. And so that means 7 must equal a plus 2b, or a equals 7 minus 2b. There's my a in terms of b. Now the other one, again, there's no other value here, so that implies there's a 0. So my oranges, if you will, my 2a minus 3b must equal 0. 2a minus 3b equals 0. But a was 7 minus 2b, so 2 times 7 minus 2b, right? That's my 2a. And let's see. So it was 2a minus 3b equals 0. So minus 3b equals 0. Minus 3b equals 0. Let's clean that up. 14 minus 4b minus 3b equals 0. So what's that going to be? b equals 2. 7b equals 14. b equals 2. If b equals 2, and earlier we said a was 7 minus 2b, 7 minus 2b, so a equals 7 minus 2 times 2, which of course is 3. So a is 3. So a is 3, b is 2, and now we can go back and substitute in. So a is 3, b was 2. Let's clean that up. So 3 over 2x minus 3. 3 over 2x minus 3. That's one, one part. And then it was b was 2, so 2 over x plus 2. 2 over x plus 2. Let me just make sure I got that all right. So 3 over 2x minus 3, 2 over x plus 2. 3 over 2x minus 3, 2 over x plus 2. Okay, we got it. And that is just a rewrite, essentially, of this integrand. But obviously, we're integrating everything. So I can split that up. And I can, and we can, integrate this. Okay, this one's a little trickier. Well, not necessarily trickier, per se, but you got to be a little careful because of the 2x minus 3 in the denominator here. When you go to do your ln, it's almost like you're doing a mini baby little substitution letting u equal 2x minus 3. So you got to remember your reverse chain rule kicker. So this is going to be 3 ln absolute value 2x minus 3, not times 2 because we're not doing a derivative, but divided by 2 because we're doing an antiderivative. Plus, now I don't have to worry about it here because that's just x, 
2 ln absolute value of x plus 2. Got to have my plus c. And so I think we've got that as a choice somewhere. Let's see. A is 3 halves ln 2x minus 3. 3 halves ln 2x minus 3 plus 2. Oh, there it is, just A. 2 ln, right? That kind of worked out. We didn't have to check too many of them. Looks like it's just a perfect match for A. There's nothing we can simplify, and everything kind of uh, works itself out. Okay? All right. So, again, just to recap the idea, for those of you that need a little recap, break down your integrand. Reverse, like, common denominator, basically. You're breaking it apart. Put it back together and kind of force your numerators to match. There might be problems that have an x value and a constant value. So you match up your x's with your x's and your constants with your constants. It just makes the, the system a little more, you know, tedious. But it's the same concept. Once you get your a's and your b's, you can go ahead and plug back in and then integrate. And we've got to use some of our old tricks. Uh, ln comes into this a lot because you're dealing with fractions, your denominators, and everything. So just be prepared for an ln, most likely. Okay? Hopefully that helps. Uh, let me know if you need any help with anything else. I'll be around. I'm just sort of uh, trying to get caught up on some grading. I'm sure you're all wondering about that. And um, that's pretty much it. I'm just going to keep drawing pictures until you guys hit stop. <laughs> I don't know what animal this is. <laughs> is it a cat? Is it a dog? Is it a fox? I wonder what the fox actually says. Hmm, interesting. I probably shouldn't make this too long a video because then it won't go up to YouTube, huh? Alright, I guess I'll stop. Seven minutes is pretty good. Alright, peace.